Kim Kyungjan Dojeon. All right, guys, welcome back. This is what could possibly be the last game in this match and possibly the last game for Starta on this tournament. Yeah. First, we are going to take a look at our red Protoss player up at the top of the map in the 12 o'clock position on the verge of all killing his opponents. He is NS Hosa Stage. Sage. Ah, I messed <laughs> it up. Forget him. Down at the bottom in the blue. The last hope for Startail. Will he be able to reverse all kill and win the match? It is Startail Bomber. Bomber indeed. So here we are, ladies and gentlemen. So yep. uh, this is odd. You know, this is the first Startail set that we've seen go a full, you know, their, through their full roster where we haven't seen parting. Uh, as we kind of mentioned true. before, we haven't seen Kyria. So a lot of the heavy hitters for Startail not appearing so far. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, it is a little bit interesting that they that they haven't been sending out curious. I think that's the big the big mystery. I I'm not gonna say how it makes me feel, but it makes me wonder. <laughs> we'll say about why they're not sending one of their uh, best zergs out. And I would actually argue their best zerg on on the team. So I wonder if there's something going on there. If he's not been able to practice lately or something like that. I would argue best zerg on the team right along with you as well. So uh, yeah, it could be preparing. Who knows? I mean, these games are incredibly recently played. Um, so it, so I wasn't training for anything in particular that I know of, but right, and quite a yeah, few it minerals. Wasn't in code S or anything like that, no, or, or code A even that I know of. Well, maybe maybe a code I, A. I think he might have a code A match coming uh, up soon. I'll have to check the schedule, but I don't know. And ooh, it looks like command center first from Bomber. All right, so taking a little bit of a risk here, but that's okay. Yes, he is, and uh, Probe yep. is trying to be as annoying as possible there, but. Uh, yeah, so Bomber going for CC first. Sage, of course, deciding to put up Gate and Gas, not going for a Nexus first, of course. But he decides not to mine any Gas once he sees that his opponent is going for the CC first. Yep. So got to take some risks. Yep. It's like a little bit of one-on-one -on -one worker action there. <laughs> some SCV versus Pro Mortal Combat. Oh, God. The SCV has some primal rage. Uh, He's got the killer instinct that uh, he wants to go after that probe with. Oh, please. That's right. Oh, stop. it's a fatal fury. I, I'm actually clicking away from His this blast now. His blue no, paint. I, you shut up right now. <laughs> if he kills that probe, he may have some guilty gears I, inside that SCV. This, guys, <laughs> it doesn't end. You see what I live with on a regular basis. Fighting it out on the streets. Why? That how a spaceship. do you have friends? I um, don't know. I'm just, you know. <laughs> In a video game, they are uh, virtual fighters. I, oh, Jesus. All right. Okay. It's cybernetic score coming up now. I'm done with this. I'm. Yeah. I'm, BRB I win. jumping off a bridge. I've threatened that a few times, actually, now, though. Hey, no so. problem, man. I can observe pretty well. <laughs> oh, well, thanks. <laughs> um, okay, so here we go, guys. You know, we're going to get up to that uh, gas level for gateway research here in just a second. Yeah, and we course, threw down the Nexus right after we saw that command center right. to skip the cybernetics core. Yeah. Yep. I mean, as we mentioned before, he did pull completely off of gas, or he didn't even bother mining gas. He wanted to get that out as quick as possible. Right. And a pro buried here next to his third. We'll see what that means in a second, as he does have quite a few resources actually built up now. Um, and we'll see what that ends up dumping into. He'll need another pylon momentarily. And, uh, and uh, oh. Engin oh, Engineering Bay block of the third. Okay, so yeah, he's uh, well aware of that possible eight gate that a lot of players have been doing lately. His teammate specifically parting yeah, is uh, the right. guy who really pioneered that. One of the first people, actually the first person that I ever saw do that. So it's a very um, good point. I suppose if you play against parting all day, every day. <laughs> something like that, or at least quite a bit, you are used to that 8-gate type of thing. So eight that's gate interesting. 8-gate all I, day, every day, uh, potentially? Maybe. Oh, look know. at that, though. A third Nexus being put up oh. at that expansion. Interesting. All right, so. so he's still going to do it. Yeah, we may see an 8-gate out of Sage here, too. That's funny that he actually would just go for that <laughs> after Bomber puts up the engineering bay. And now, awesome. if Bomber doesn't scout properly, he is not going to be expecting this at all. That's, that's hilarious, man. Wow. Yeah. Oh, and Bomber probably thinks, hee hee, I have done the right thing. And yep. uh, th this this base is going to be blocked for quite a while. But of course, that sucker will eventually clear up the engineering bay. It takes about a year and a half, That's though. smart. And Bomber did a very Thorzane-esque thing, where he actually went two racks after the gasless, uh, or I'm sorry, the CC first, into double gas, into a third barracks. I mean, that's very, very okay. close to what Thorzane does as well. And he prioritizes early add-ons and quick tech, but still yeah. maintains enough units to stay safe. Well, it seems very clear that Bomber wants to go for that regular old you know, three barracks medevac play that is the standard mm -hmm. in TVP for the most part here, and doesn't want to worry about that 8 pressure as well. But I think, yeah, with that third Nexus coming out, there's a very good chance we'll see it. It could also be some tech. I mean, there are 
two gases up for Enesosa Sage, which, you know, is the right amount oh. for that. And Bomber still doesn't know about that Nexus. How many gateways do we have up so far for Sage? It's he is up to a four. total of four right now. Okay. Uh, but adding two more right now, so six, uh, seven, eight. Four eights. more. There it is. Yep. There it is. Eight the, gates. The dreaded eight gate. This is something that's becoming very popular in Korea, and it is so good against Terrans that play that standard three barracks build. Here's, here's the worst part for Bombers, that what? he thinks he has successfully held this off. Look at the way he's investing in tech right now. Yeah. He had, uh, he had yeah. another engineering bay come up, so he's going to have upgrades very soon. He's yeah. investing in medevacs. He's investing in stim. Uh, yes, well, he has very good bunker coverage up at the front, but he has no idea about this third base, and he thinks he's put a stop to that eight gate. I, yeah, I think he absolutely does. I think he's got his opponent playing normally, um, and so Bomber is going to play normal too. I mean, what he's doing right now wouldn't be considered risky, you know, in the current metagame, but against something like an eight gate, it certainly is. Looks like Sage is going to lose the Stalker, though. Yeah, he does lose that, but uh, that's just going to actually make Bomber feel even more comfortable. So we'll have to see just how hardcore Sage wants to make this. He's starting to warp in units, and Bomber actually pulling back into his main. Okay, so maybe kind of wondering if there's going to be some War Prism Harass or something. Also something that you see on Korea pretty consistently. Yep, three racks, medevacs coming out as well. Now just what we were thinking before, but Sage, yep. he is going to power ahead in supply here. Nine yeah. minutes into the game, already sitting on 83 supply. It is staggering how many units you can produce off of this 8 gate. Now, did Bomber scan? That's what I'm wondering, because one scan in the main would certainly reveal everything that his opponent has, but he has not done nope. that yet. Yeah, Bomber really, really thinks that he knows what's going on. I, I think, unfortunately, he's kind of misreading the situation. Now, I'm not saying Bomber is dead or anything like that. I'm just saying that he's going to really have to micro well. Oh, he actually did cancel. He did salvage one of his bunkers. Oh, yep. He thinks he has not... his opponent figured out. He's expanding oh, he's as well. moving out even. Oh, my God. And he just can't. Oh, he just salvages no. bunkers. Oh, Bomber. Oh, bomber. bomber, you are dead now. You are. I'm just, I've got my hands over my eyes he right does. now. He does. He does, actually, ladies and gentlemen. Bomber All right. actually just, goodbye, Bomber. Three more bunkers coming up now. Sage, <laughs> he is going to crash through the front oh, line here. No. Um, now, Bomber may be able to stabilize for now. Um, he is pulling a few NCBs off of the line, but still, that's that's two oh, bunkers coming up. Nope. One's about halfway done, and we're going to see another warping cycle here momentarily. My God, he's just throwing on so many units. This is absurd. Uh, my heart bleeds for Startail Bomber, man. I mean, he he thought he was in such a good position, just the perfect anti-timing for him. Yeah. And Sage has got such a strong army. Bomber is going to have a very hard time holding this off. He's not doing a bad job, but look at that. Look at the warpins from Sage. It's just way, way too much for Bomber to handle. Is, was Bomber able to get away with a drop or anything? I don't think he no. has. We have a factory moving up, but that's all right now. He and land uh, and make Hellions, I guess. <laughs> Hooray! I can kill two <laughs> workers. Oh, man. Poor oh, Bomber. Man. Um, so, Sage, as you can see, just building up some more forces here. And Bomber's not dead yet, but it's just infinitely Shut up. difficult. Shut up. He was stone dead in a moment. Yeah. All right. Go, go for a walk. <laughs> I feel happy. I want you to be stone dead in a moment. All right. So here Damn. comes Sage once again. This is round two. He's got a few zealots filtering through, running up to the front. Uh, with the guarding shield, those zealots so are lasting stalkers. for quite a while. The uh, stalkers are proving to be very powerful. However, this bunker off to the right is being repaired up pretty well. Yeah. I think Sage is going to have to back up and just wait for a couple more cycles in a second. Yeah, the force fields could have been a little bit better there, and he did lose a couple sentries. So uh, Bomber... Bomber actually showing just how good he is surviving against this for so long. But if you look at the supply count, I mean, if, especially if we brought up the units tab right now, yeah, it looked pretty scary. Yeah, I mean, not a whole lot. 13 stalkers. Another big warp in here. That was, uh, you know, I mean, Bomber does practice against this a lot, as we said. I'm sure uh, yeah, Parting sure. has run it against him a million times. But, wow, uh, Bomber actually doing really, really well holding this off, I got to say. Yeah, oh, very much so. Um, he does certainly. Oh, he got a pretty good engagement last time, too, because Sage had a ton of his zealots. He actually had all his zealots trapped around his sentries and stalkers, so they weren't able to engage that yeah, time. Yeah, exactly. His force fields kind of ended up hurting him. But mm -hmm. he just did warp in a bunch new, a bunch of new sentries here, trying to lure Bomber out to get him force field in that narrower choke. Mm -hmm. And either way, I mean, Enesosa Sage on three gates. He's even adding a Twilight Council, two more gateways, and a forge right now as yeah. well. So. Even though Bomber is surviving, uh, Sage is just continuing to expand. This isn't really all in or anything like that, really. No, not at all. Uh, it's pretty easy to continue to uh, press after this. And it looks like Sage and is going to go for it once again. It's
going to try and go through the bunker here in a second, but he can't. He just can't. He kills the front line of units well, with his uh, zealots. Weird engagement, too. Didn't target the bunker. Didn't try to force yeah. build off the bunker or anything like that either. So Sage playing this a little bit bizarrely, and Palmer is catching up on supply. It's 110 to 130. This is not going how you usually see these eight gates go. Palmer is really, really playing this well, and conversely, Sage could be doing a little bit better about how he chooses to do all this. All Looks right. Like Bomber's going to try to break out. Yes, he is. Guardian Shield. No, uh, more warp ins in a second. More sentries goes. actually making their way in. Finally, here we go. Couple of force shields trapping in some units there. He's going to need to get some better force shields. Bomber actually making his way out, trying to as best he can. Uh, the Medivacs not being targeted quite yet, and actually Bomber starting to suffer some pretty heavy losses. A lot of his supply tied up in Medivacs, but he does bust through uh, the front line of Zealot and now it's just relatively fragile sentries and stalkers remaining there. Finally, a couple more warp ends happen. He did lose a few more workers in there as well. He's down to 67, or he's down 67 workers to 26 at the yeah. moment. Wow, and Bomber, Bomber is actually going to hold this pressure despite the heavy losses. It is just incredible that he's able to bend, that he's been able to beat this back. Yeah, so... I can't uh, believe it. Wow, Bomber going from the worst possible scenario, salvaging those bunkers right before he moved out to just controlling so well that he manages to hold this off. He's still way, way behind, of course, yes. but that is just brilliant play by Bomber. And Bomber not going to press his luck right now. His opponent has control of the high ground sitting there. And uh, over on Sage's side of things, he's now sitting on 70 workers, three bases, Templar Archives coming up, 1-1 one, one upgrades going to finish at about with Chrono Boost 20 seconds or so, and uh, Blink is going to hit as well very, very soon. Yeah, Blink will be very useful against the bio army of Bomber. Mm -hmm. And Sage teching up to that Templar Archives too. That's also going to be useful. Nice force field splitting up some of the army there. A lot of his sentry is being lost right now, and Bomber continues to push forward here. That was just like the best possible time he could have attacked too, because 1-1 one, one not finishing up until right now. Yep. Even with that, Sage still uh, forcing his opponent to suffer some pretty big losses. More Zealots making their way in now, and it looks like Bomber is going to lose most things up at the front. He's reinforcing with a few more forces, but again, so many medevacs overhead right now. It seems like one medevac per bio unit at the moment. Yeah, I mean, Bomber is not going to be able to push this too far back to his opponent's base. He's certainly not going to be able to, you know, force back Sage to his natural or anything like mm -hmm. that. But he has given himself a little bit of breathing room. He can try to expand now. If he wants to, we might see that command center go down. He looks like he's still... The problem is, is that Bomber needs to continuously, constantly make units just to survive. And that's going to make it very tough for him to expand at any point in this game. And looks like Zealot's being thrown in there now. So um, he is going to have a pretty powerful push part two in just a bit. Bomber finally feels go. comfortable enough to move out with a drop over on the right-hand side of the map. He will circle around. And there's actually pretty good vision from the probes, though. He may be able to sneak right through the middle, but at the same time, here comes Sage. Yep, and he's got Blink now, so he can afford to be a little bit more uh, aggressive with these stalkers. You know, uh, when I talked to Bomber way back last year when he was about to play against I'm MVP in Code A, in which he actually beat I'm MVP, 4-2, uh, I believe it was, in that best of seven Code A finals, mm -hmm. um, Bomber said one of the things that he prides himself on is his ability to break out of of hard contained situations and he certainly showed that he's able to do that quite well in this game we do have plus two plus two hitting for sage soon though along with charge lots um a leg speed i should say for those zealots and blinking back right there before taking any losses is sage yep. um so once again palmer he's still just sitting on these two bases though he's almost mined out of his natural he is certainly almost mined out of his main so he is working on his last gasp of mining and yep. here's the drop hitting though for bomber he's going to go after that rich vespian Ooh. geyser medevac uh, is feedback it's not going to be enough this archon actually going to fall pretty quickly but blink stalkers are making their way in now and this drop will eventually get cleaned up yep that's right the medevac no energy and no life left so it does go down bye bye yeah bomber trying to just get any sort of traction going in this game he's still behind tutu's about to finish as well for Ennis Hosa Sage, Bomber basically all in. He's got a lot of SCVs along with this as well. His plus two weapons is on the way, but it doesn't look like it's going to finish by the time the army's engaged. Yep, 2-2 two, two finishing up here in 10 seconds, and that's exactly what Sage is waiting for right yep. now. So he's going to begin that engagement here in just a second. 3-2-1, two, 2-2 two, two is finished for Sage, and he is going to try and press oh, this home archons. right now. The Archons are so good. There's splash damage hitting so many units. Bomber down to 60 supply, and it looks like Sage GG. has just finished the all-kill of Startail, knocking them out of the tournament. Enes Hosa is guaranteed a top-four spot here wow. at IPL Team Arena Challenge. Yeah, 